What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Teddy B. Blackman. I'm here just to give you a quick reaction to the Boston Celtics sweeping the Brooklyn Nets. Um, this is this is a crazy, crazy thing, man. Um, literally nobody was giving the Celtics a chance. These guys were the two seed, and Brooklyn was coming in the seven seed. Obviously, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving star power was enough to dissuade sway everybody's opinions to think that they could, you know, somehow win the championship. Um, obviously, before the season started, they were the favorites to win, but that was, you know, when they still had James Harden and a quote-unquote super team. Uh, obviously, things didn't – the team didn't end the, look the same way the end of the season as it did starting the season. A bunch of drama surrounding the Nets, man, and, and interested to see what kind of – what kind of off season they're gonna have? But anyways, I'm gonna take this time to give credit where it's due. I'm gonna take this time to give credit to the Celtics, man. Celtics buckle down, um, play excellent defense throughout this series. Could have been better. They got some things to work on still. Um, hopefully they do because a lot of things I feel like they won't get away with in the next round if they play Milwaukee, um, who who is projected to beat Chicago. They're up three one. No disrespect to uh, Bulls fans or whatever. But, <clears throat> yeah, I feel like they just did an excellent job of, like, keeping Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving uncomfortable. Now, obviously, Kevin Durant uh, had a, a huge game four here, but it just wasn't enough. Kyrie couldn't get it going. Um, role players surprisingly didn't get it going. Um, I was in, I was very intrigued because in Boston, the role players, uh, Drogage and Bruce Brown, uh, Blake Griffin, these guys are playing phenomenal in Boston, but then came home and, and played regular. So I was kind of perplexed about that a little bit. Um, this game four was came down to the wire. Jason Tatum fouled out with a, uh, four or five minutes to go. So Celtics had to grind this one out. Um, officiating was uh, horrendous uh, down the stretch. Um, <clears throat> after a series of, of playing basically just 90s basketball, they completely uh, – turned back up the clock to the future and the present and was calling ticky-tack fouls every which way. Uh, I don't like Scott Foster as the referee and his crew, and this is the reason why. But anyways, um, man, Jason Tatum has really taken on the task this series of checking Kevin Durant, doing his best just to make him uncomfortable, just to make him like, you know what I'm saying, like, Everything difficult on him. Now, everybody's making excuses saying there must be something wrong with Kevin Durant and things like that. But I'm, I'm going to go the other route, man, because one thing I don't like is when you make all those excuses for why a person's not playing good other than just giving the other person that's in front of them credit, and it's not just Tatum, it's the whole Celtics defense in general, that discredits the defense, man. You know what I'm saying? And that discredits, like, the Celtics. And that's that's what's, that's what's like, wrong with sports media now is, like, They'll take a favorite, and they'll just ride or die with the favorite instead of doing what they're supposed to do. Sports media, you're supposed to be mediating the sports. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if Boston is playing good, talk about the Celtics. I get it is, you know, the big names and the, the fake big market and stuff like that, but who who keeps winning these championships? It's the little markets that keep winning. I mean, obviously the Lakers won in a bubble, but, you know, before that, it's Golden State. Golden State's not a big more a big market now because of the you know the the championships in a row and all of that. But hey, Golden State wasn't looking at that as a a big market or you know M- Milwaukee from last year not a big market. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I feel like it just it really just just credits like a lot of things. And man, I, I'm just taking this time to give them credit because I had Celtics going out in the first round. Uh, this year, I had them finishing with a 500 record first round. I had them being the seventh seed. Um, didn't didn't predict who they would play and lose to. Just thought, but after you know halfway through the season, to quote Jalen Brown, the energy shifted. Guys start playing with better IQ, better like awareness, better defense. Um, it, it's it's coming to fruition now. So, um, the the crazy thing to side note, the crazy thing to think is like the Celtics also have a max contract opening up this off season. So um, with the rest of the Kimball Walker money coming off the books, and uh, Al Horford's salary being chopped in half, essentially going from thirty million down to fourteen million, they'll they'll have like enough money to like not even have to trade or cut anybody, but to bring in like another big piece. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of 
scary in itself no matter what happens here on out. Now, obviously, I picked them to get put out in the first round, so anything after this is just house money to me. Like, they go into the second round. I'm not expecting them to win no championship. I'm just enjoying going along, enjoying the ride. You know what I'm saying? Every game, I'm posting little memes and stuff like that, and we just, hey, we just having fun with it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, uh, interesting offseason looming ahead from Brooklyn. Kyrie Irving is going to be a free agent. Uh, they need to tweak that roster. I thought they were going to fire Steve uh, Nash, but uh, reports came out earlier today saying that his job is safe no matter the outcome. Um, I really don't see how that's possible, but, hey, I'm going to listen to them until it happens. Got to get that Ben Simmons uh, situation squared away and – I wouldn't be surprised if, if Ben Simmons or Kyrie isn't traded. Uh, sign and trade, maybe Kyrie or something. Or just trade Ben Simmons, you know, try to bring in like a Donovan Mitchell or try to bring in like a Dame Lillard or something like that. Um, obviously, I don't feel like that would be like a big help because, you know, it's just too many ball-needy people and only one basketball. You know, Ben Simmons will actually be a good fit if he's healthy, but I don't know if he's going to ever be uh, healthy. Um, physically anyway, I'm not going to speak on the mental aspect of things. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, great job by the Celtics, man. 4-0 is looking like they're going to play Milwaukee. Uh, them, them, them last couple of games coming down the stretch in the regular season where everybody was losing on purpose because they didn't want to play Brooklyn and Boston stepped up and, and was still winning and weren't scared. You know, this is, this is a reward for that effort, you know what I mean? And then you get home court advantage against a Milwaukee coming in, so maybe that helps out a little bit. Um, I guess I'll do a video to preview that series when when Milwaukee officially eliminates the Bulls in the coming days. But other than that, I just wanted to give the Celtics credit, man, and, and congratulations to them on this sweep, man.